Hey guys, in this video I want to ask the question, can a work of literature be considered a literary masterpiece if it is riddled with grammar mistakes? Now the King James Version of the Bible has long been considered a literary masterpiece. But what I'm going to show you in today's video is that it is now in fact riddled with all types of grammar mistakes. And in this video, I want to concentrate on just capitalization errors. So, what I've done is I have taken from Bible Gateway and copied and pasted into a Word document so that we can limit to how long this video is by not going back and forth. And I put in several scripture verses where we have capitalization errors. And you'll see that I have them color-coded. And what appears in yellow is a... Uh, mis capitalization mistake or error after punctuation and what I've highlighted in green shows us that uh, the translators or printers actually knew the proper way to capitalize things. So let's start by looking at Joshua chapter 7. We have several verses here. We're going to start with uh, verse 7 first and as you can see I've got alas highlighted. Well we have a comma and then alas is capitalized when it shouldn't be. And then down here we have uh, a question mark and we have the word would where it should be capitalized and it isn't. And then you can see in the green we have a comma and it's properly, it's not capitalized the way it should be. And again a comma and there's no capitalization the way it should be. Now in Joshua 7 verse 13 we have the word sanctify after a comma and we see that it's not capitalized and then just a few words later we see the word sanctify again after a comma and it is capitalized so clearly they knew in this verse the translators that you should have a uh, there should not be a capitalization after a comma yet we see one right there again down here we have a comma and a capital there capital T in there, which should not be. And down here we have a comma and we see that it's not capitalized like it should be. Joshua 7.20, same thing, comma, small letter A and and, and then right here we have a comma again and now we see the word indeed is capitalized. Moving down to Joshua 7.25, Again, same thing, comma, capital W and Y. Now here we have a question mark, the end of a sentence, yet the next, le the next word isn't capitalized. Again, a mistake. So just to show that problems aren't here in just Joshua chapter 7, let's move on down. We're going to look at a few in Exodus. We have Exodus 2, verse 14. Same thing, comma, capital W. Here we have a question mark, no capitalization. Here's a question mark, and it is capitalized. So they know that they're supposed to capitalize after question mark. Same thing down here, comma, no capitalization, as it should be, comma, and now the word surely is capitalized. Exodus 5, 4. We have a comma. Wherefore is capitalized, and it shouldn't be. Question mark, no capitalization. So we move on to Isaiah. We've got verses 63, 11, 15, and 17. In verse 11, comma, capitalization, where it shouldn't be. Question mark, no capitalization. Verse 15, question mark, not capitalized. And I include verse 17 just to show you in these few verses there's a question mark and they knew that it should be capitalized. It is correctly capitalized there. I only have a few more to show you. Just want to make sure you understand that it is all throughout the Bible and not just a few books or a few chapters. Now we move to the New Testament. John 4, 7 through 10. And there's more problems with this verse than just capitalization which you will find in a lot of these where there is a capitalization error frequently 
the verse has also been altered in some way. So here we have a comma, capital G in give. Again, comma, capital H in how. Right here, comma, no capitalization. Once again, shows that they knew what should and shouldn't be capitalized. Question mark, the end of a sentence, no capitalization in four. Verse 10, comma, if is capitalized, comma, and isn't. Again, comma, give is capitalized, comma, and isn't. Here in this one verse, you see that clearly the capitalization, the capitalization isn't done properly after commas in a couple of instances. In other instances, it's done like it should be. Okay, let's look here. 1 Corinthians 11.22. This verse is completely messed up. We have a question mark, no capitalization. Question mark, no capitalization. Question mark, no capitalization. Question mark, no capitalization. Yet, just one chapter later, they clearly knew that you need to capitalize the first word after a question mark, as they have in both of these instances. And then the last one I'm going to show you is in Mark 6.3. When we have a question mark, no capitalization, and then a question mark, and we have capitalization. Now, I chose this verse just to show in case some people out think there think there's some type of crazy 17th century rules about what should and shouldn't be capitalized after the end of the sentence. This is the same word right here, and is not capitalized, and right here, and is is capitalized. So just proof that they did indeed know that and should be capitalized when it begins a sentence. Yet here they fail to do it and in other places. Now I would like to challenge any of you out there to just pick any 20 consecutive pages anywhere in the King James Version you like and chances are you are probably going to find at least one error in capitalization. More likely than not, you will find several. And that's because, like I said, it is the King James Version is just littered with these capitalization errors. So now, as most Christians know, <clears throat> the King James Version of the Bible was first published in 1611. But what many Christians do not know is that it was revised in 1769. Now, what was the purpose of the revision? Why did they do that? Well, one of the reasons was to update a lot of the spelling. But another reason was is to uh, clean up some of the errors. There were some misspelled words and different things that, uh, after 150 years of studying the Bible, they found these errors in the Bible, so they decided to make a revised version so that it could be flawless. I would argue that the 1769 revision, when they were finished with it, that it was indeed flawless. But what we see in our Bibles now is that clearly it's no longer flawless. So can, you, can we actually say the King James Version is indeed still a literary masterpiece? And in, I know there's those of you out there that would argue, well, uh, I took this off the Internet. No wonder it's not right. Please, pull out your own paper Bible, your King James Version. Open it up. Look at all of these scriptures. You will find the exact same errors. Now, guys, I made this video uh, in hopes and, and pray that this will open the eyes of somebody that is watching this video that currently does not see the Bible changes. At the very least, I hope it causes you to at least consider the possibility that your Bible is being supernaturally altered. I offer up this video as just another piece of evidence that there are alterations being made to our Bibles. Um, please Check out my other videos. I have uh, several videos that offer other pieces of very compelling evidence that shows us, and I think when taken in totality, totality 
<clears throat> absolutely proves that our Bibles are being supernaturally altered. So please, guys, pray about this. Um, do some more research. Consider the possibility that this is actually happening. Because you really need to be aware of what is going on in your world today. This is a harbinger of other things to come. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I will see you next time.